Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and welcome to the Game Exposed podcast. If you guys have a brief question on a narcissist and you want to submit it and have your question answered on the podcast, submit a brief question, you guys, no more than a paragraph because it won't be read. Um, text your questions to 917 636 1109 and text me your questions, and I'll try to get to as many questions as I can and answer them on the podcast, but please make it brief, no more than a paragraph, okay? 917-636-1109. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz, and today I'm going to answer some listener questions. I'm going to get through as many as possible So let me get right into it, all right? They write, what happens to the narc's new relationship if you delivered a huge narcissistic injury? For example, exposing their cheating on you with the new supply. After their initial reliance on the new supply to get them through the mortification, what happens differently, if anything? Well, nothing happens differently. To begin with, when you expose a narcissist, let's say you expose the narcissist, you caught them cheating with the new supply, and you expose them. That narcissist, it's not going to affect them the way you think it's going to affect them, and I'll tell you why. Because the narcissist is just going to suppress any kind of shame. They're going to tell the new supply, you're crazy, all right? You're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. There's no justification in what you're saying. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is, did the new supply know about you, okay? Did the new supply know about you when they were cheating with the narcissist on you? Because if the new supply knew about you, then the new supply is narcissistic as well. And why is that? Because they had no empathy for you or the fact that you were in a relationship with the narcissist. So when you expose the narcissist for cheating, They're just going to be like, okay, no problem. I'm just going to bounce to the new supply. And they're going to tell the new supply that you're just obsessive. You're crazy. You don't know what you're doing. And if the new supply is in on it, they're not going to, they're not going to care either. As a matter of fact, the new supply will be happy because now maybe they'll feel that you'll back off because you found out what the narcissist was. Now, if it's a situation where the new supply didn't know about you, okay, and you went to the new supply and you told them they were cheating, first of all, the new supply is manipulated by the narcissist. So the narcissist has already worked on them to to make you out to be a mental case. You're a stalker. You can't get over them. All right. You have, uh, you know, you have anger issues. They're going to, they're going to really destroy you and manipulate the new supply to think that you really are, uh, you know, a, a whack job or a weirdo. So the new supply is not going to care. They're not going to care. Either way, they're, they're not going to care. And the narcissist, as far as the mortification, the narcissist doesn't care. I'll be honest with you. No, when narcissists get ch- caught cheating, when they have another supply, they don't care. They just say, okay, whatever. I'm, and they move on to the next person. That's how cold they were. They are because they were never all into the relationship to begin with. All right. They were never all into the relationship to begin with. So they basically don't care. They're not mortified the way you think they're mortified. They just figure, okay, she found out my game or he found out my game. No problem. I got the new supply to bounce to. So the new the narcissist is not running to the new supply and sitting there and crying over the fact that they got expo- you know, exposed for cheating. They're just going to be like, they're going to just say, they'll say something like, uh, well, you were cheating on them anyway. Okay, they may make up lies like that, which is narcissists love to do. They'll just try to see what narcissists do is rather than face shame, like a normal person faces shame and may feel mortification. A narcissist doesn't face shame. And instead, they deflect all of that shame onto the other person, even if they're guilty of cheating, even if they're guilty of lying. They'll say, well, you made me do that. Or they'll 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 justify and say, well, you must have been cheating. So 
So they're not going to feel mortification. They're going to feel justified because they're going to say, well, I did what I had to do because you made me do that. Maybe they'll say something like, oh, well, you always fought with me. So what's going to happen is the narcissist is just going to bounce to the new supply. They'll get busy with the new supply and they'll just call you crazy and they'll go along with the new supply for a while till they have problems with the new supply and then they'll be looking a monkey branch to somebody else. So it's it's like this. Narcissists, you know, they're not all concerned with the fact that, you know, they don't like being exposed, but when they get exposed, like if you expose a narcissist and you say something to them like, well, you're toxic, you're a narcissist. What's that narcissist going to do? They're just going to blame shift and say, you're crazy. You have mental issues. Go talk to a therapist. They're not going to sit there and say, am I a narcissist? Am I toxic? Never happen. Okay. So the bottom line is they're not, they're going to suppress any kind of feelings of shame or mortification. What they're going to do is just twist it around because this is what narcissists do. They're going to twist it around and just say, you're crazy. Or if I did cheat on you, you made me do it. It's always somebody else's fault for whatever they do. They never take full accountability because they don't want to deal with shame. So that's how that's going to roll out. Okay, you guys, I'm moving on to the next question. And he writes, I'm one of your regular listeners of your podcast and videos. Thank you. I've had bad experiences with my ex-narcissistic girlfriend. My question is this. Could you do a podcast on how a female covert narcissist sleeps with other supplies while she's still with her main supply? Well, what a covert narcissist, a female covert narcissist does is she does, you know, basically the same things a male covert narcissist does. She's going to sleep with her other supplies When she's not with you, she's going to give you excuses. Nobody gives you excuses like a covert narcissist. And the same goes for the females. They'll give you excuses like they're working. They'll give you excuses like they're sleeping. They'll give you excuses like they're going to their mother's house or their family's house. And that's when they get out and they're able to go see their other supplies. So they're always loaded with excuses or they're always disappearing Female covert narcissists are very, very promiscuous. They're very insecure. They try to get love through sex, all right? They use their sexuality in order to manipulate somebody. You know, they want you thirsty for them, all right? So they use their sexuality to, you know, get somebody thirsty for them so they could wrap you around their finger. But the way that they get with their other supplies is basically you know, they're constantly going to make excuses. That's how they do it. And, you know, when you start to see like they, they're making excuses why they can't see you so much, or, you know, they're not picking up their phone or they're not getting back to you for a few days. That's when you have to say to yourself, well, you know what, if they're not calling, if they're not texting me, they're calling and texting somebody. If they're not seeing me, then they're seeing somebody, okay? Because narcissists can't be alone. So if they're not with you and they're not calling you, you could trust and believe they're calling somebody else. So that's how they roll, okay? Anytime they're not with you, they're gonna be trying to get that other supply in. And a lot of times, like when narcissists cheat, You know, some of the popular times that they cheat are nighttime. They tell you they're going to bed and they're going out to meet their other supply. Or sometimes in the mornings, narcissists love to cheat in early morning. Well, they could cheat any time of day, but they love early morning. Because again, if you call them in the early morning, they're going to say something to you like, oh, I was just sleeping. I was just sleeping. All right. What better excuse not to pick up your phone or something is to say you're sleeping. So they're going to be with their other supplies when they're giving excuses to you. So when you notice somebody ghosts you or anything like that, or they're not getting back to you for long periods of time, that is a red flag. Don't, you know, negate that and think like that's no big deal. You know, people that want to be with you will make time to see you. They will move mountains. I don't care how busy someone is. I don't care how busy I am. If I really like somebody or I want to see somebody or I want to talk to somebody, Even with, you know, three kids, I'll make time and I'll go, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make time for somebody. That's people that really care about you. So that's how that rolls out. Okay, you guys, I'm going to move on to the next question. And here's what she writes. 
Why does the narcissist say heal and we can only be friends? After I found out he has a girlfriend, then he said, I'm following my heart. I love my girl, which I suppose is the main supply. After finding out she gives him money for rent and pays his cell phone bill. When I stop talking to him, he texts my mother telling her I was crazy and trying to ruin him and his girlfriend's relationship. Well, what was going on is he was stepping out on his girlfriend and he was starting up with you, making you think that he was single. And that's exactly what these narcissists do. Now he's in a panic because he knows that you know he's got a girlfriend and he's terrified that you're going to go contact the girlfriend and let her know all the times that you saw him. And that is going to cause a riff in his relationship with his girlfriend. Now, this guy is a, a user. He's using his girlfriend for a supply of money, and he doesn't want the money train to end. So he's got to get you out of the way. And the fact that he texted your mother, that shows he's desperate for you to back off. He's worried. He, he's worried you're going to contact his, his girlfriend and tell her all the things that you know and all the times that he was writing you or that you're going to cause problems, all right? The bottom line is, you know, your mother needs to block him. You need to block him. You need to forget about this guy. He's dirty, all right? He's dirty. And, you know, this is why, you guys, I tell you all the time, when you get involved with somebody, you better make sure that they are single, all right? Single, all right? You you got you to gotta make sure that you're on their social media. If they don't put you on their social media, that is a huge red flag. They got something to hide. They may have their old lady or old man on there or a lot of another excuse that they love to say is, I don't do social media. When in fact, they're on social media creeping all the time. Social media is the narcissist's playground to find you know, multitude, a multitude of supply. But the bottom line is he's telling you to heal. He's basically patronizing you, telling you, oh, you need to heal and we can only be friends. Now you see the fact that he's saying he only wants to be friends with you is that what he's doing is he's putting you on the shelf, okay? He's putting you on the shelf. He's not blocking you and, and totally writing you off because he may bounce back to you in a couple months or something like that if things don't work out with his girlfriend. That's why you got to block him. He's dirty. He he played you, all right? And basically, don't ever be friends with a narcissist that you break up with, all right? Because all they're going to do is just come back and use you when they're not doing good. So you never want to be somebody's option. And that's what they do. That's why they try to stay friends with you. So the bottom line is he's just, when he says heal and we can only be friends, it's because he's basically trying to, you know, trying to be easy with it because he wants you to back off. But this guy is in a panic if he called your mother, he's in a panic that you're going to cause trouble for him and that his girlfriend is going to find out about you. Bottom line is delete, block, and get him out of your life. You're dealing with a shady person, a shady narcissist. Okay, you guys, I got another question that is a really good common question that people ask. And she said, what about the discard? What happens when they discard you? Do they let go for good then? Not necessarily, all right? Just because a narcissist discards you, keep this in mind. They're discarding you then, okay? It doesn't mean in the future they're not going to come back. And, you know, nine times out of ten, a narcissist will come back. They'll make like nothing ever happened, and they will try you. The narcissist comes back when they're not doing well or when they're bored with the new supply or the new supply is causing them problems. So, you know, somebody asked me this in the past too. And he said, well, you know, another influencer says when they discard you, they never come back. That is not true. Okay. That is not true. When a narcissist discards you, they could come back. It depends on how good a supply you are and what they feel they can get out of you. If they feel they could still manipulate you and you have something to offer them, yeah, they'll try you because narcissists are ballsy and they get desperate. And, you know, when they're desperate for supply, whether they discarded you or not, if they feel they can come back and they can walk in and they can manipulate you and they could love bomb you and reel you back in, they'll try you. They will try you. So just because they discarded you doesn't mean that they're good, you know, they're 
they're gone. I've seen narcissists, you know, I've dealt with narcissists. Where we had a big blowout fight, big blowout fight. And he came back, you know, like months down the line and made like nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened. And then he said, you never gave the relationship a chance when in fact he was playing mind games. All right. He was playing mind games. So yeah, they'll come back. Even if you have the wickedest fight, if they feel that you have something that'll benefit them and they feel they can, you know, schmooze you and, and give you that lovey dovey business. Yeah, they may come back. It, it, you guys, it's like this. It all depends on what's going on in the narcissist's life. If they're not doing good and you are a benefit or you have something to offer them, yeah, they'll try you. But they won't come back if they're doing good or if they have a lot of options. Then they don't need you. When they don't need you, then they most likely they won't come back, all right? So that's usually how it goes. Okay, you guys, I'm moving on to the next question. And she writes, in short, recently discarded after separated, as described, after over 25 years of marriage. Any recommendations for holidays and other days, Mother's Day, birthday, what to do, not to do? Well, you don't do anything. You don't contact the narcissist. And if they contact you, you don't respond, all right? Once that narcissist discard this narcissist discarded you after 25 years of marriage, all right? You don't owe them anything. You gave them 25 years of your life for them to just discard you and move on most likely to somebody else. So if they reach out on Mother's Day, birthdays or anything, you don't respond. No contact, no contact. And I'll tell you why. Because when you let toxic back into your life, even if it's just for a holiday or something like that, it opens a whole Pandora's box to other toxic shit, all right? So, you know, don't forget what this person did to you. You're not, you're not friends, all right? You're not friends anymore. They did you dirty. So you don't owe them anything. So you go, this is why we say, if you want to live in peace, you go no contact. Now, people say to me, well, what about if you have children? When you have children, it's a whole other ball game, all right? That's why you go to court. You have a legal divorce stipulation that you follow with regard to holidays, birthdays, vacations for the children, and you follow the stipulation, all right? But if it's just you, and let's say your kids are grown or you don't have children, it's a wrap. The narcissist is RIP. No response, no reply. You don't, you don't have any contact with them or anybody who's in relation to them. That means their family, their friends, their flying monkeys. You, if you want to live a peaceful life, you cut these people out of your life, okay? Because anything you say to their family and friends, their flying monkeys, is going to go back to the narcissist back and forth. And the other thing that you have to keep in mind is when you keep in contact with the narcissist after they discarded you, they feel they can they can jump back into your life. And I've seen that where they've discarded somebody and then they reach out to their exes and then they still want to be friends with them. And why is that? Not because they want to be fucking friends with you. It's because they, they, they like you even as a security blanket. They like to know that you're there. Maybe they just need somebody to chit chat with when the, you know, the new supply isn't around or things aren't going well. So they use that excuse like, well, you know, can we still be friends? No, we can't be friends. You discarded me. You're done. You're RIP. No contact whatsoever. We're not friends. All right. What you did was not something that even a friend would do. So you are done. Okay. You are fried. And you, now you move on. You look forward in your life and you don't look back and you say to yourself, good riddance. Okay. Good riddance. I don't owe them anything. Okay. This person took 25 years of my life. They're not going to take another minute, another second, another happy birthday, another Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever. No, no, they're done. They're done. They're out. And you move forward in your life and you deal with other people in your life that are going to add to your life. Leave the past in the past. Okay, you guys? Okay, you guys, I'm moving on to a next one. 
and they write, Hi, why would a narcissist ex want to help me with dropping me off or on the airport and watching my dog while I'm going on a business trip and event on my new job? This is after six to seven months of a breakup of a 13-year relationship. He's not getting paid for this. Well, he's going out of his way to drop you off. There's a couple different reasons why he could be do- going out of his way to want to take you to the airport and also to watch the dog. One reason could be he feels a certain sense of guilt because maybe he did you dirty and, you know, he, you know, he feels better. But the bottom line is he still wants to keep you in his life, all right? This person still wants to keep you in, in his life. So he feels by doing these things, now you feel obligated and you owe him, all right? So if he takes you to the airport or he's watching your dog, now he could try to weasel his way back into your life and keep you on the side. So you guys, you guys, once it's done with the narcissist, it's done. Now, the other thing keep in mind is if he's watching your dog, does that mean he's coming in your house to watch the dog? Because if he is, he may be going through your stuff, all right? Narcissists are very nosy. He may be going through your stuff, trying to see what you've been doing while you've been gone. They want to go in your house. Narcissists love to go in your house when you're not home, okay? They love any opportunity to get in your house, go through your things, go through your mail, you know, maybe check your computer log or whatever they can to snoop around because especially covert narcissists, they're snoops. So they he may be, want to get in there, snoop around, see what's going on, see if you're talking to anybody. May, you know, if they're really, really dirty, maybe looking to rob something in your house. And the other reason is so that you owe him, okay? So next time, after he's done you a favor, he could say, well, I did this for you. He could throw it over your head, and that's a form of control. So now you feel obligated because he did you a favor, do not take favors from a narcissist because any time a narcissist does something for you, it's never, ever, ever, ever free, okay? They will either, they will want something back in return or they will try to guilt trip you in the future so that they could get their way with something, all right? So he's not doing it out of the kindness of his heart. He's doing it for the reasons that I specified. He could be doing it to get in your house, see what's going on. And he could be doing it to kind of like keep a connection with you and him that you owe him something. All right. So let it go. Let it go. That's his way to maybe walk back in your life if things aren't going well for him right now. Goodbye. Good. When it's done, you guys, it's done. It's done. If you even let the door open a crack, these toxic people will come back in your life and, and they'll wreak havoc on, havoc on you again. All right. It'll happen again. So if you want to live in peace and you don't want to throw your life away, wasting time with these toxic people, cut them off completely. Okay. So I hope that helps you guys to understand how narcissists are and how they operate. And the, a good way of learning is to listen to other people's questions because a lot of people are going through the same thing only in maybe a different kind of circumstance. But the bottom line is, you guys, you have to, you know, like I said in my other podcasts, when it's done, it's done with a narcissist, all right? These people do not change because they don't self-reflect. So let it go. I hope that helps you. If it does, please subscribe to the podcast. Please share the podcast and go follow me and subscribe on my YouTube at the Game Exposed Podcast. And if you want, follow me on Instagram for new posts at the Game EXP 123. And have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you wanna get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question.
Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at The Game EXP123 and also on Instagram. The game EXP one, two, three. Okay. And have a great day.